welcome to Christ Central. Remember, our annual Christmas Eve service will be at 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve. There will be a general membership meeting immediately following the service today with a briefing regarding the church's finances. And we appreciate your faithfulness in making use of the offering plates available at each doorway. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, this morning for our ministry moment, uh, we thought it might be appropriate, since it was only last week, to give y'all a little bit of an update about our food pantry. Uh, our church's food pantry uh, continues to reach out to our community through the monthly distributions that we have. Uh, we work through the Community Food Bank of Central Alabama, and because of that, we're able to serve approximately 160 families each month by supplying them with canned goods, meats, cheese, and butter. Our distribution is on the third Wednesday of every month around 6 p.m. The truck arrives the day before, and we have volunteers that unload our items and bag the groceries. Um, the distribution itself, since we've gone to our drive-through system, only takes about an hour, um, so it's not anything that's a super long process. It's easy to help out with and easy to volunteer and be a part of. Uh, in addition to this, over the past year or so, we've participated in the Community Food Bank of Alabama's Farmers to Families program where a box of produce is delivered to us and distributed on the same day. At times, it also can have milk, cheese, and butter. And through that, we've partnered with the People's Place Church in East Gadsden, and their pastor and his wife and their congregation distribute between 200 and 300 boxes of food most months. Um, their church recently gave us a $500 donation to continue our food pantry ministry. Unfortunately, the Farmers to Family program has ended, but we hope to have another opportunity to partner with the People's Place Church over in East Gadsden again in the near future. We also recently had a USDA audit, and we passed with a perfect score. Um, and we do truly appreciate your donations to keep this ministry going, whether it be financially or helping by uh, giving food items. We want to make sure that you uh, always make any financial donations above and beyond your regular tithe. We can always use volunteers, whether it be on the delivery and bagging day or the distribution evening. The time for the delivery and bagging is 9 a.m. on the Tuesday before the third Wednesday. And the third Wednesday we donate, or we distribute rather, um, starting at 5.30 with our volunteers getting here um, around 4.30 or 5 o'clock. Um, I know that I've uh, been able to participate in a lot of food pantry evenings, as I know many of us have, uh, and I know it's always a joy to be a part of. It's always a great service that we have for our community. And so if you haven't had the chance to come out and be a part of it one Wednesday, I would recommend and encourage that you do so. Um, it's a great time, and with our drive through system that we, d that we have now, um, it's easy to help out, easy to volunteer, and it gives you a chance to help meet the needs of a lot of people in our community and serve alongside our family here at Christ Central. So with that in mind, let's stand as we worship together. Amen. Thank you, Mitchell. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With the mighty hand.
forever God is with us forever forever amen good job out there Psalm 92 it is good It is good to praise you, Lord, and make music to your name, O Most High. It is good to praise you, Lord, and make
Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is. Broken dreams and wasted years Until the past to disappear Oh, and let me tell you about my Jesus And all the wrong turns that you would Go and undo if you could Who can work it all for your good and Let me tell you about my Jesus He makes a way where there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave to Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty, who would care that much about me, let me tell you about my Jesus, oh. He makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an empty grave, ain't no sinner that he can't save, let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and His grace is free. And the good news is I know that He can do for you what He's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. seated.
you would stand with us as we sing a couple of Christmas carols together. Sorry, wrong verse. So come, desire of nations. <laughs> Start it again. Oh, come, desire of nations.
people said, Amen. You may be seated. How's everybody doing this morning? Y'all done your Christmas shopping? Everything's ready? It's prepared? We've just got a few, I mean, Pam's got a few more things to do. Yeah, I just have one more thing to do, so I'm pretty much there, though. I'm ready for Christmas. Are, are you inviting some people to come Christmas Eve? We're going to tell the story and sing the carols. Uh, the, the table group, some people from the table group, that's a, a group of people that started out of here that are young adults are going to come and read for us, and we're going to sing carols. Maybe just one verse because there's 12 of them we're going to sing. So it ought to be a really fun night. It's something enjoyable we could do together. Um, this morning I want to talk to you about John's gospel and how he sees things. And if you're asking uh, to tell the story about Christmas, most of us will, will probably mention the long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, the shepherds and the sheep, the sky full of singing angels, the wise men in the east, you know, an inn that has a no vacancy sign, a very, very pregnant Mary, and a very worried Joseph. Uh, but today's gospel reading, it doesn't, it doesn't mention any of these events. So I, I would like to take the time to figure out why John doesn't mention all of those events and what it is he's trying to speak to us this morning. But the best way to go into that is to have a prayer. So would you bow your heads and join your hearts as we pray together. God, you are our creator. and We offer this humble prayer this morning during Advent. We come to worship with a song of thanks in our hearts, a song of redemption, a song of hope and renewal. We pray for joy in our own hearts and all the other ones in the world. Hope in you, O oh God, love to forgive and peace upon the earth. We ask for the salvation of all of our family members and friends, and we pray your blessing on all people. May, may there be bread for the hungry, love for the unlovable, healing for the sick, protection for our children, and wisdom for our youth. We pray for the forgiveness of all sinners and the abundant life in Christ. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts this morning with your love and with your power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, the reading I want to do this morning is coming from John. It's John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness. And the darkness did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it, or absorb it, and it is unreceptive to it. There came a man commissioned and sent from God, whose name was John. This man came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe in Christ the light through him. John was not the light, but came to testify about the light. There it was, the true light the genuine, perfect, steadfast light which coming into the world enlightens everyone. He, that is Christ, was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. The world, he came to that which was his own, that which belonged to him, his world, his creation, his possession, and those who were his own people, the Jewish nation, did not receive and welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right, the authority, the privilege to become children of God. That is, to those who believe and adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name, who were born not of blood, that is, of a natural conception, nor of the will of flesh, the physical impulse, nor of the will of man, that of a natural father, but of God, that is, a divine and supernatural birth. They are born of God spiritually, transformed, renewed, sanctified. And the Word, that is Christ, became flesh 
and lived among us. And we actually saw his glory. Glory as belongs to the one and only begotten Son of the Father. The Son who is truly unique. The only one of his kind who is full of grace and truth and absolutely free of deception. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So here we are coming into the last little bit of Advent as we prepare for the coming of the King. And the reading in the Gospel of, of John, the lesson according to him this morning, it, it's heavy, isn't it? It sounds like really philosophical, how he expresses what's going on. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not like Luke's account. It's not all warm and cuddly with shepherds tending their woolly sheep in a starlit night and angels singing in the background. Um, uh, a couple of star truck, starstruck teenagers traveling through the wilderness, one noticeably with child, the other one, you know, looking for a place to stay the night. John's version has none of this. As he's the last gospeler to write, perhaps he thought that the story was already told and told again and told again and it was time to do something more or something different. So now given that the facts are a matter of public record, he intends to explain to us what this night means. At least in part, he intends to explain to us. And to do this, he has to provide some kind of context for us to understand. This is the same context that we'll start with on Christmas Eve. In the beginning. In the beginning. Those words take us back to the very start of it all. Before the cosmos. In the beginning, those three words take him in his first century readers back to the very first words of the Torah. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. It's as though at the start of the Bible, God intends to remind us about the beginnings of things. And that John, echoing this format, likewise affirms that humans have this history. This history that started at a time and in a place. A history that begins with God himself. Continues with God. And will, of course, conclude with God. In which God and Jesus Christ, the Son, are the major players, not just in your life, not just in my life, but in all lives. All things came being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. Without Christ, we do not exist. It's, it's difficult to imagine that sort of linear chronological distance from the beginning of time till now, right? Right? For most of us, our history kind of begins when we're, what, about five years old? Some of us a little earlier, some of us a little later. I don't remember five years old. I do remember just smatherings of time in my life. I was telling Pam the other night, I remember tragic moments. I remember my mother arguing with my father. And my mother packing a suitcase and trying to drop kick him out the door. And me taking the suitcase back in the bedroom and unpacking it. I had to be three years old because they separated when I was three, you know. And that's about all I remember from three years old. I remember seeing Superman on TV. I, I remember that. Everything else, it, it's, it's like ancient history. It's something that we've got to study. Something that we've, we've got to interpret. Something we've got to assimilate, right? It, it, usually through tedious hours in a classroom with some professor or teacher telling us exactly what happened. And nowadays we're finding out that that's not exactly what happened. Somebody rewrote it, you know, in a crazy way. Still, we can go back to our own personal beginnings, can't we? We remember significant events, the ones of our lifetime. Of course, if you're under 25, it's not going to be the same ones that I remember, okay? But, but close enough. You probably saw it on a rerun, uh, like the invention of the smartphone, the internet, personal computers, 9-11, the Challenger explosion, Armstrong on the moon, and so on. Although, like I said, if you're under 25, that was probably a rerun or something you learned in history class, right? 
In school, we study history to learn more about our beginnings, like uh, the World Wars, the American Revolution, the Industrial Revolution, the Renaissance. We go back further to Shakespeare. After that, things kind of get a little far, foggy, dark agey, kind of, right? Until we see this star lying bright on a dark velvet pages of history. A supernova, I'm told, that exploded about 4 B.C., in which heralded the arrival of a child whose birth we celebrate. Not just today, but every day. Not just this time of year, but all time. But John takes this as his starting point, and he travels even further back in time. He skips past Alexander the Great, the Persian period, the adventures of Queen Esther, the Babylonians and Assyrian empires, past King David, past Moses, the architect of the emerging Hebrew nation, past the the tribal conflicts of Abraham. He goes way back in time. He races past global floods, humans who lived hundreds of years until he arrives finally at Genesis in the beginning. In the beginning. Now we're standing at the head of the Torah, the start of the Holy Bible, and the first three words we read, in the beginning. So John repeats these three words and explains why the transcendent God became a human by emphasizing two attributes of this God. Of the squalling baby in Luke's account, he says, in effect, this baby is the word and also the light. In other words, this child, this little baby in the manger, he came to say something to us, and he came to show us something. Both of these aspects. Let's look closely at them and see these aspects that the baby in the manger is trying to teach us. What does the child actually say to us? It's striking how easy the words are in today's text. They're words that a three-year-old can almost read, that a five-year-old can almost get if we say it to him. The author, he doesn't waste time with $20 words when he can use a 50-cent word, you know? Uh, Here is the the thoughtful and philosophical John. He's expounding upon the preexistence of Christ. His his co-eternity with God the Father. The incarnation of the supreme infallible God in our lives. And he uses one-syllable words to do so. Words as simple and as vulnerable as the baby in the manger. Out of the 228 words of the reading today, 191 of them, that's like 84% of them, are one-syllable words. In in fact, in the first two verses, the only multi-syllabic word is beginning which appears twice. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. It's as though John is saying that this is not complicated. Now, as Christians, we have a tendency to complicate some things, don't we? This is not complicated in the Word. It's like the old saying, Read my lips. John's kind of going like, read my lips. Or, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Kind of thing. He's doing that, right? Uh, Perhaps we don't always understand the words, though. But, But let's try to dig into it. What do you think is the most important message Jesus came to share with us? What did he want to say? Anybody? It's not rhetorical. I'm expecting an answer. Peace. Anybody else? It's okay, you can shout it right out. Love. Peace, love. Forgiveness. Anybody else? Joy, abundance. I mean, we could come up with a bunch of words, but the main one I want to bring to you is, I love you. God sent his son because he loved us. He loved the world, right? I love you. And and don't dismiss those words as being maybe a little bit too sentimental. Uh, Think about it. Just as the cross demonstrates God's love for us, so does the cradle. The love to come down from heaven. 
what else but love could explain the willingness of the Son of God who was present at the creation to leave heaven's glory where he held the title God, God alone, I am that I am, and to appear in the human form as a vulnerable crying baby in a manger of straw. That's got to be love. That's got to be love, right? Moreover, God had tried to show this love before. He, he sent messengers to us through the prophets, the priests, the kings, the judges. The angels even showed up sometimes to tell us about him. And, and when all else had been done, he finally sends his son. God sent Jesus. And, and, and it was an act motivated by love. As John himself notes, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. His son was the word. And his word to us, among other words, that we found out today, was, is, always shall be, I love you. I love you. It's a very simple message. Three syllables. I love you. Simple. Simple enough for everyone to get. Now, uh, that's what he came to tell us. Now I'm interested in what did he come to show us? He came to show us something too, didn't he? John also describes this child as the light of all people and the true light. A word is a solitary unit of expression. It can be spoken into darkness. It can be a voice crying in the wilderness. But it sheds a light that can suddenly illuminate an entire room. It can illuminate a landscape. It can illuminate a world. And the words of Christ illuminated the whole world. The whole world. Uh, see, the light provides context and opportunities. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. Light shows us how to take the right path. Right? This child came to show us the way. To tell us, I love you. And then to show us the way. The way to eternal life and a love relationship with God the Father. To show us that way. To something that exists beyond what's here on this earth, in this world, in this now. To show us that. He says, I am the light of the world. And Jesus said, whoever follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have light of life. The light of life. When we follow the light, we can be confident that we're walking on the right path. Jesus said these words, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So we know if we're following him, we're on the right path. And that's a good thing. Now, we're on the right path to this deep and abiding love relationship with God. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that truly love? The light that the Bible says is, is for all people, by the way. All people. Uh, that means all of us. No one can take that away from us. It resonates with what John will write in the third chapter of his gospel. For God so loved the world. The world. The, the word he uses there does not mean the cosmos or the planet or the globe. It means nations or people. That's the translation of it. It's not about the earth. It's about the beings on the earth. The souls that exist here. That's what it's about. It means you. It means me. And it means everyone else on this earth. It's like saying that the church is not a building, but it's the people in it. It's you that make the church. The chairs don't do it. Because if they're just sitting here by themselves, nothing's happening. All right? It isn't until you put your body in it that that's going to change something. In the beginning, and the middle, and the end, as the word of God and the light of, for all people, Jesus clearly is someone that we want to get to know, isn't he? And, and not only do we want to get to know him, we want to get to know him better. And better, and better. Jesus is the one person that we want to be part of our history because we know it gives us an eternity and more. 
someone who we want to have a beginning, a beginning that will, I pray, will never end for each of us, right? Not too much endures today. I mean, political regimes come and go, buildings go up and go down, businesses are here today and gone tomorrow. Even relationships, even personal relationships are fragile. They're often held together by what? The gossamer threads of a, of, a, of a prayer and a promise, you know? And that's what's holding them together. And then, at Christmas, we affirm in the midst of all this uncertainty that in the beginning, God. And he cared enough to come down here and make sure we knew. See, the Bible pushes further. In the middle, God. In the end, God. Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. Or as, as Christ at the end of time puts it, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The be all, the end all, the first word, the final word, the last word. Matter of fact, the only word, Jesus Christ. Now, Christmas, it it brings us uh, to a new beginning, another restart, doesn't it? Where we can once again remember the baby in the manger as as well as as the man on the cross, right? We can hear the word speaking to us and see the light showing us the way. Don't you feel so loved during Christmas? And don't you want to share love during Christmas? Trans-Siberian Orchestra did a thing a while back, and one of the things, one of the things they said is, oh, don't, I wish we could just keep this going all year long. I wish we could just keep this going all year long. As we stand at this beginning, so much lies in potential ahead of us. We've got so much goodness to wait for, so many good ministries to do, so, so much good time to spend with each other. Great fellowship, good outreach, great ministry, all stands ahead of us in this year. At the, at the would-have stage of the beginning, what if we do this? What if we do that, right? What if we take this moment to begin, perhaps to begin again even, to join forces with the divine, which was present in the baby Jesus? What if we listen to the word and follow the light? Uh, we stand at the cusp of a new year. We have renewed hope for ourselves, for our families, for our neighborhoods, for our cities, for our nation, I- indeed, for the world. We have new hope. And while the world did not recognize him then, perhaps, just perhaps, maybe they'll recognize him now. And maybe the only way they're going to be able to see him is through you. Maybe the world will recognize Christ through you. You take that to this next year and show everybody the Christ in you. I hope you're able to glean something from that this morning. May it be so. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's take a moment and pray as the band gets ready. Holy Father, here we are, your children. We're so, we're so grateful this morning. We're grateful to be here among each other with you and dwelling each one of us and emanating in the room. We are thankful, Lord, for your presence, for your blessing. May we this morning hear and see what you have to say to us and what you have to show us. May that be so. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Let's stand. We're good news. Part of our responsibility is to go and tell it to others. Don't tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold throughout the heavens, there's sure no holy light.
Thank you so much. Um, before I give you the benediction, uh, I don't know if you recognized it, but this morning in the announcements, we said we were going to gather and talk about our finances. Don't get nervous yet, okay? <laughs> well, what I want to do is take the time after meeting with finance and with the leadership team to make sure you clearly understand where you stand financially, to, to be transparent with all the numbers that we have, and to give us a plan for next year. And, and what I'm hoping is that all of you will stay and see and listen so that we can attack the next year with fervor so that we'll have the things that we need to spread the love of Jesus Christ from this home base, okay? So if you would, please stay after the benediction and let me have a few more minutes of your time. shouldn't take more than 15 or 20 depending on how many questions you have, okay? And hopefully finance will be here to help me answer those questions. <laughs> that would be a good thing. So would you receive this benediction? This is what I pray for you. I pray for you all the time. I walked in this morning. I was just standing next to David. And who else was there? Robin, right? And I could just feel the spirit of God just settling on the room. You know, I was thinking, he is here. I'm so grateful. But I pray he is in every moment of your time. I pray he's to your right and to your left, above you and underneath you, behind you and in front of you. And you're rising in the morning and then you're going to sleep at night. I pray he is in every moment of your time, everywhere you are. But I need you not to keep him to yourself. He's meant to be shared. May that be so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Say byes and highs and then sit back down, okay? <laughs>